my resume or are you going to dick around? Hello. Hi. Welcome to Losers Talking to Losers. Hey, hi. And I am Reed Charles and my co-host who finally came back from getting unstuck from the restroom. <laughs> oh, my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So oh, my name is Luis Almeida. He's and today we have... Yay! Val Frazee. Did that hurt? Yeah, there you got it. He said it. Val Frazee. Oh, you're back? Bobby, what's, your, what's your full name? What? Valerie Rose Frazee. Rose? Mm -hmm. German? No, French. Ah, Louis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually... It's my husband's name. Ah, that's right. That's, right. Ah, that's what we want to see. Is it husband's name? So what is your what's maiden? Your, yeah, what's your maiden? Meyer. German. Yes, but my mother's Italian. How do you know this stuff? What? Meyer and she said German right away. And yeah. Like, well, I missed the other one. I missed the French one. No, I just do a lot of research on uh, names and stuff. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. It's not about me, man. Stop talking. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got your fancy. Uh, fancy resume. resume. That's pretty cool. Don't yeah. touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. So, uh, I guess. Do you have a stage name? You go by just Val Frazee. It's just Val Frazee. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. So, so where? So, tell us where you're from. And I'm originally from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I grew up there, born and raised. Las Vegas, Las Vegas. No. Did you have like? Wow. What kind of job did you have over there? I'm curious. I was in high school, dude. I worked at. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're born. Well, there. they do stuff underage. I'm just. Curious. Remember, we only had 20 know. minutes. We only had 20 minutes. Cut it out. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna gonna age. You can't serve a beer until you, well, you can be a stripper, oh, yeah, but I right. never was. I came to Texas when I was 18 to go to college. Okay, I just want to, I just want to kind of clear, clear that. What did your, your mom and dad do? Uh, my mom was an English teacher uh, for high school, and my dad was a construction worker, and my stepdad also was construction. Oh, okay. So you born there? Yeah. Grew up there? How mm -hmm. long were you there? Until 18? Until 18, and I came to Texas to go to college. Now, what's that, what's that, what's that like when you, when you were born there? And then seeing how Vegas changed to where it is now. Um, it's, uh, to me, it's sad because it's a... So how was it? Is it kind of like Austin? Like Austin? It, to, me, it, to me, it's a lot like Austin, minus um, slot machines and, you know, gaming, obviously. But as far as um, when I was a kid, it was very relaxed atmosphere and uh, a lot of live music, like here, a lot of different people. Oh. You know, it was actually quite small Sorry. when I was a kid. Just spill? So I'm, uh, I'm a drunk. He's trying to oh. interview me and he's drinking. Yeah. Was it kind of like Casino? Like, was, you know, the movie Casino show? No. We mean, no. No. I grew up in a house. I went to a regular high school. We didn't hang out at casinos. No, no. I'm, yeah. I'm saying like, like the movie Casino with, with Al Pacino. Yeah. With Robert, Robert, Robert De Niro. No, I like the way she was, was thinking at first. That was an interesting question. That's good. No, I, 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 that I was thinking, no, was it like, it's like, the way they described it was that it was a, a you know, sleepy town, small town. At one time, yeah. You, oh, so you were there during... When, oh, when I was born, the population was probably maybe a couple hundred thousand people. By the time I turned 13 or 14, we reached a little over a million. That's a big change. Yeah. Huge. Because so like, I see maps. Sure, yeah, for sure it hit the million dollar mark or million people mark yeah. by the time I left for college, somewhere in that time frame they hit a million so you're people. Like, I'm out of here. Was it getting that bad or just like a lot of you know, craziness going on in town? Um, you know, I mean it was gradual so I didn't notice that. Yeah. I think the biggest thing I noticed was, you know, as a kid most of the casinos were still mob owned and not corporate owned and right. a lot of that changed when I was in high school. Caesars oh. Palace was the last to go corporate and I think I was a sophomore or junior in high school when that happened. So there was a lot of shift in the customer service. Yeah. A lot. A lot of shift. So the history that, that the movie shows the casino, is that somewhat accurate? You know, it's been a long time since I've oh, okay. seen that, that movie. I mean, I, I would have to watch it to tell you. Right, right. Well, I know one thing. I remember in the news, they, they talked about where the casino was at one time, you know, for, for the adults. For yes, entertainment. adults yeah, only. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was family, yeah, it was adult only, yeah. And then you said the word family. Then it, then it did change at one time. I when remember, I was in high school. Is that when it was changed to family oriented? When, I, yeah. now, when I was in high school, the MGM had a theme park, um, Circus Circus. They still have the theme park, but okay. they were trying to bring a family element. And that's the, um, was that the time you felt that it was good or not good? 
I don't know. I don't. It, it just things shifted so gradually for me. I don't. It wasn't like a sudden change, you know. Okay. Um, I was excited about it in some ways because, uh, like, I had the opportunity to audition for the MGM theme park to be one of their characters at that okay. time. You know, that was something this is new. You there, it? Yeah, that, that theme park is no longer there, but so that was cool. It was just you know? like a job. Basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was you know I was going to a performing arts high school at that time, and so the idea of performing. Yeah. A, for a job in high school. I mean, the only other thing you could do is um, for something like that was be a showgirl, which some of my friends that were dancers were at 18. They were doing shows at night and going to high school during the day. One girl actually dropped out. Yeah, that's when they turned 18. Wow. Yeah. So you know that's where the spark started. She was in perform so performance so high school. So you man, you totally grew up there, elementary school, everything. junior Born, high? Yeah, everything. And then, so after high school, so, what, so you went you, after high school? You stayed there for college, or like where did you? No, do this? I went to college in Texas. In Texas, when you were yeah. doing this, this uh, you said you went to theater arts school. Was that during? For, yes, during high, it was my senior year of high school. They opened the performing arts high school. Oh, not art, not, not like RTF of you at the colleges or anything, but it's like a no, theater it was a arts, high school, high school theater, theater arts oh, high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where it started for you then. No, no, no. You, you just did it for a job. No, I went to that high school because I wanted to go to school for theater. And so I got to have dance and theater and all that in my high school curriculum. I still had to take regular high school classes. Yeah, yeah. They still had to follow. It was a public school, but you had to audition and all that for it to get in. That's, that's, just, that, but that's where, that, that's, that's not where it started. But that's where it started. Yeah. Well, no. no, no. Think. Uh, well, you, it, did, you took it's high school. It's like high school. I was already doing it. Instead of taking PE, I was doing theater in high school, but yeah. I had a focus Wait. in high school. Instead of it being like PE, I took art to see. That's what I did. Okay. Right. Instead this, of except this school, this school was geared towards. It was a visual art, so artists. Okay. Um, and then you you had a focus. You either, uh, my focus was theater. You could focus in music. You could focus in dance. It was like the fame school. Oh. That's the kind of high school I went to. And you chose that because that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, but that's not where it started. Um, oh. From the time I was a very little girl, I used to perform. I did commercials, local commercials growing up. I modeled as a kid. Oh. Um, oh, so from the time I was little bitty, done. I was doing... some. My grandmother used to encourage me to sing and dance all the time in public. I mean, I don't ever remember <laughs> not. Do it. Yeah, yeah. And she would tell me, "Dance, darling, dance." All of, since I was a little kid, I don't remember not wanting to do it. Dance. This yeah, is yeah pretty much. Oh, no. Not like that. You know, not like that. You just ruined my grandmother's oh, memory. You're Las Vegas, no. baby. Stop dance. It. Give me that. Dance. You, just, you just ruined my grandmother's memory. You just stepped all over her grave. I hope she visits you tonight in your sleep. Dance. dance. No, she was always. It was Las Vegas, baby. No. But See, was, there we go again. Do you know, when I came to Texas, I got asked if I was a stripper and did I live in a hotel. Really? No, I lived in a house, just like you and just like you. Yeah, that, that's, that's the one thing that I was like, that's, I knew a guy when I was in the Army, I knew a guy was from Vegas too. And I was yeah. Like, you know, you're, you know, people were up there? Yeah. There's families there? Yeah, like you, know, you fly like, in, you fly over houses, people yeah. live there. What? They're not just magically planted, they live there. I, 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 I still like where grandma's gone. Dance, girl. No, I hope she. I hope my dead grandmother visits you tonight in your sleep. She might. I hope so. So after you, you. So tell me these commercials you're doing. What the hell? I did local commercials. Like there was a safety commercial. You know that one of the local news stations did. It was basically learning about crossing the street, not drinking poison from under the sink, things like that. How did you get into that commercial? How took you to the audition? I didn't have an audition. For that, my mom knew somebody at the news station, and they needed some kids that were comfortable <laughs> with being in front of a camera. And my mom said, "My kids will do it." And she danced all the time. Uh, yeah, and so yeah. I did commercials, and we shot that commercial um, all day. It was advertising like um, mm -hmm. a specific program that parents could buy. It was like songs okay. and a coloring book and things like that. So it was actually promoting that, but it was a local thing through the news station. Hmm. Um, and then I did another commercial that was like not to do drugs that was called the Dancing Pancakes. They were trying to go off of the with the, with, with the same station? It's a different company, um, okay. but all through, just through networking. Mm -hmm. And that was like a drug can anti-drug campaign thing. I don't know whatever happened with that or if these people so were Reagan, it. during Nancy Reagan's time? Say no probably, jokes. probably right after that. I, I just remember it was a ridiculous I listened commercial. to her. I listened to her. Don't do drugs. Right, Just okay. People. Drink oh, out. Oh, killed it. This was, yeah. the, this was the first bottle we, this is a, uh, uh, from Norway. 
Mm -hmm. They actually they actually travel all around the world. They yeah. Lay down yeah. They, why they do that is funny. So so I do this. So you did that. You're in high school. You're yeah. in Vegas. But she was she was small. She was doing all these. So you're doing yeah. You were doing things. Yeah. So I was, was an extra in um, Honeymoon in Vegas. That was the first movie set I'd ever been on. And how no you on that? Yeah. Wait, that with uh, Nicholas Cage yes. and Sarah Jessica Parker and James Caan. Oh my god. That was the first movie set I'd ever been on. How old were you then? I was seventeen. And how did you? How did you apply for that? How did you they just did a call. They just did a call. Okay, I went I through, a, sort of. I went th like you know how some casting services they cast extra extras through a headshot. I just sent mine in. I had an agent at that time in Vegas, and she mostly cast extras anyway. That was what she did. So it was kind of that process. So you did do you do some of that stuff? Is it why did you do it just for just for work or? I was trying to be an actress. I was trying to. Nah, like, you said earlier it was it's not where the spark happened. That's not where the spark happened. I always wanted to be an actress, but I was doing things like that to try to get exposure. So where did spark happen? I, when I was a little kid, sometimes. Jesus. So it's a way back. Okay. Way, that's what I'm saying with my I grandmother. Got, I got that. I sang, when I was like five or <laughs> I six, that. I sang at... Oh, um, five or six I, is when it happened. Well, no, oh. I was before that, but that's where I first performed was like, I sang something at my brother's like, Scout-O-Rama. She was wanting attention. She was like, look at me, look at me. No, I really no, wanted to her grandma. <laughs> her grandmother. Her <laughs> grandmother. The same thing. Yeah. 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 Your yeah. grandma encouraged this also. She yeah. encouraged it. I yeah, wrote yeah. plays when I was a kid. We performed for my parents all the time. No oh, way. That's so oh, cool. Yeah, since well, see, I was little. Just, uh, my yeah. whole life. That's so it's been your whole life. Like the fact that I'm not making a living at it now sucks because I've been yeah. working my whole. I feel like I've been working my whole life. Damn. But you, but you always had it though. You, mm -hmm. you were always. I don't remember. You not. had it. But so, something in your grandmother and your parents saw. Oh look, she, she's. You know, yeah, I don't know when. And boom, they just encouraged it, and it just happened. So, the, so just just to recap that part. Wow. It always happened since you were small. Your grandmother was always saying. Dance, dance, Sing, right? whatever. Sing. <laughs> so stop throwing money, man. She Why do you keep throw throwing money? money? <laughs> she, you just go. You're <laughs> marring the memory of my you grandmother. Know, you keep doing that. Stop it. I'm going to bring the other co host in, Kevin Smith, <laughs> to replace you. I'm sorry. You'll be throwing the figure of everybody. What's worse, right? throwing the figure of everybody? I'm making. She's going to be a show girl. Yeah. She's going to be so frosty. She's going to make a lot of money. That's pretty cool. But anyway, it always started that way. You always enjoyed always, it. Always. And then the the, the, uh, the the new station, they needed, your, your mother knew someone at the new station. Yeah. You went for it, networking, network from, it was, from it bouncing was, from one, from one, uh, um, from one show to another show and just meeting people and networking and stuff like that. And then finally, you submitted yourself for the background extra. But well, my agent did. Yeah, yeah. agent. But this is like, there's a lot of people looking out for you. A lot of people were looking out for mm -hmm. you, like helping you. They were, at that time. Yeah, at yeah. that time. They were looking out for you, uh, promoting you, you know, trying to encourage you to do that. And yeah, yeah. that was it, a lot, it, a lot was of that, positive encouragement. Was that, being an extra, was that your first time on a movie set? That was my first time on a movie set, but I've been was, on a TV set. I mean, I even did, there was a practical oh, okay. parenting series I did for PBS with uh, Dick Van Dyke. Was it Dick what? Van Dyke? Yeah, I never met him. And that was all about um, teen pregnancy and things like that. I did that in high school. Always, there wow. was always. So, I mean, I did a lot of stuff. I did a commercial for um, anti-gang violence when I was in high school. I did, I mean, I did a lot of local stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, just always was trying. Wow. And I yeah. was in theater in high school and, you know. How was it behind the scene, especially with PBS? Um, it's no different than any other film set with a camera. I mean, there was a director, there was, you know, producers. and um, mm -hmm. Now, compared to when I did TV recently, obviously it was a larger scale, but it was still all the same kind of setup. The movie set was much different. I mean, the cameras were bigger, and there were more people, and there was more, um, there was just more of everything. I had never, at that time, other than some crappy magician when I was a kid, seeing a famous person. Mm -hmm. Even though I grew up in Vegas and they, well, I mean, I saw Alice Cooper, I worked at the forum shops at a candy store and I saw Alice Cooper, but apart from that, I had never really seen a famous person. They were all over, but it was around me, so it wasn't, it didn't occur to me mm -hmm. until on that set. Oh, like, these are, like, these are famous actors, yeah. you know? On the, on the set of? Of Honeymoon in Vegas. Okay. And that was, um, that's a good movie, actually. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So really that cool. was um, where I realized this is a very large scale thing because everything I'd done was just 
they seem very local. Yeah. 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 They seem very local, and this is like, well, these guys are out of town. They're coming in town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Movies is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just pretty cool to be around that. How was that experience on that? Um, it was say? fun. It was miserable. It was. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, know what, let's, let's talk fun. about. Let's talk about. The miserable part, and then really well, nice. and, it then, was, and, then um, and then after that, explain to us the fun part, so we okay. can end it on the miserable Oh man, this is like rubbing alcohol. Yeah, it is. It's vodka. Oh, this is delicious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so. I don't know if you saw the movie, Which but one? honeymoon in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. But okay. this this scene that I shot was uh, after the flying Elvi have jumped out of the plane. Yeah. So they shot the first part of that in the summer. And then the second part where they have just landed and we're all there, yay, Elvis, all these Elvises, there's all these Elvis impersonators, yeah, which also right. didn't phase me because I grew up around that. Um, so they're all, so at that point when they filmed the part where they had landed was in the middle of winter. And what people don't realize is that it actually gets very cold there. So it was probably like 30 degrees and they were filming in the middle of the night and we all had to wear shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> Continuity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a pickup scene? Well, it was, they were picking up, they, they had filmed the first part, they never filmed the ground scene. I don't know why, hmm. so I was there for when so they, they decided landed. to shoot it months later? Uh, yeah, for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, if yeah, it, who knows, it, it's just crazy know. you know that it was happening. So they brought back everybody? Wherever they no, showed. they just called new extras a lot of times. I mean, some extras came back from, but a lot of them were just new because mm -hmm. there were so many months in between. You just got whoever. I mean, we were just yeah. background, it didn't matter. No, and then... You're out there, everybody has their coats on, it's 30 degrees outside, go ahead. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have our coats on, we were in shorts and t-shirts and sandals oh, and it was summer it's in the time. film. Sweat. And people don't okay, realize it between, gets cold. But, but before, yes, in between before, before, before we were they, all sharing coats in, in the middle, in between takes. Yeah. Yes, we were pulling jackets up, on and then taking them off. It was freezing and the food was wow. terrible. They fed us horrible, nasty, like, sausages and hot dogs and it was awful uh, of course the actors had lovely food and the crew had lovely food we had shit it was for shit yeah, the actors always treated bad it was terrible but that's yeah. only that's only um a larger scale of extras yeah they have to make food they had to they, they have, have to, to make food yeah. that's quick enough to feed, to feed everybody it, yeah. and that's and but james khan was really nice he <laughs> um joked with us all the extras that he was around, he joked with us and cut up and was very nice. Wow. Nicholas Cage was kind of standoffish and so was um, Sarah Jessica Parker. But to her defense, horse she lady. was in a showgirl, yeah, horse lady. <laughs> she was in a showgirl outfit in 30 degree weather So and trying to work. Is so I'm sure. Upset. Probably. I don't I know. know. She probably didn't get her hay that day. Oh, I don't know, maybe. It's not the same <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Put this on something. She's going to see that. Um, so, you know, <laughs> and it was in the middle of the I night, horse, so it was exhausting. I have no idea what you mean by the horse thing, by the way. Oh, she, she, has a horse, <laughs> she has a horse face, a little bit. Don't say that. <laughs> is, that is that what it is? I didn't see that. No, I'm sorry. Well, that's Horses what are beautiful. Horses <laughs> are beautiful. <laughs> I would not put her in the same category as a horse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I don't know what movies you've been watching. Anyway. That's funny. <laughs> Wow. Well, that vodka is really working for you, man. <laughs> so that just getting cold in here. I have to warm up with this vodka. So, that deep eddy, man. I got this free. Oh, yeah. deep eddy. I got it from uh, South by. They uh, helped them move some stuff, move some garbage around. Locally, they threw me a bottle. <laughs> it's like it's got here before someone changes their mind. So I ran back to the car. Come back with that bottle. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, oh, so that's what her, a whole life, just growing up there, doing trying to do. Stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Doing plays. Now, that was the bad part. So it's freezing your ass off and stuff yeah. like that. And when they, especially when they say, okay, everybody take off your coats and jackets, come out summertime. You go, oh my gosh. Action. How long was that shoot? How long was it? It was, uh, I, it was all night, is all I remember. I was oh. there late. Like, I think my call time was like 10 or 11 at night. And I went home oh, at 5 wow. or 6 in the morning. Yeah. My dad picked me up. It was long. Did you ever do like any friends, or you just by yourself all the time doing all this stuff? Do you have any friends? With friends, doing yeah. yeah. I mean, so like when I did the practical parenting series, some of the people that I was in theater with in high school were in that with me. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. That's pretty awesome. I wish I had done that in high school. Like drama. It was too much fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I did plays. You know all that. Yeah, it was fun. 
So you're getting, you're getting, you're, you're getting some, some, you know, going, you know, getting your booster. Like that's what I said in the military. I'm still getting my booster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess we could, we will jump in. We're almost about to shut down. Yeah, we're minutes away. So we can probably lead into. Well, what happened after that? When did you have after? Oh that? yeah. So after this is so when you when you left. I, yeah. You graduated high school and then you left. Yeah. You stick around that long, or you're like, I'm out of here. It's the summer, and then came to Texas to go to college. Well, I'm, I'm curious. Wow. Was that the only film that you did? Yeah. yeah. Yes, at that time, that was oh, the okay. only. So well, plenty, because, plenty of plays. Yeah. Commercials as a kid. Yeah, TV. All that kind of stuff, and the first like extra film. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for kids to be extras. Yeah. And even though I was a kid, I was in high school, and so yeah. that worked for that scene. Yeah, you know, exactly. there wasn't a lot of opportunity for that. Cool stuff. I just kind of just bothers to, to to grow up in that kind of atmosphere of like yeah. craziness and everywhere. After high school, what did you do? Yeah. I went to college to study theater. I had a full scholarship to a small hmm. college in Texas. Which one did you go to? I went to Panola College in Carthage, where the infamous Bernie <gasps> is from, and I actually knew Bernie. Bernie um, oh helped with my scholarship. Yeah. What? Yeah. Before he went to prison. This is before long. This is before, before he wife. killed the old. It wasn't his wife. It was an old Mistress, lady. No, 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 no. It was just an old lady. I know that's good. I, know I actually was cast in it, but they cut. No, no, we don't want to talk about that yet. Hold up. Hold up. I know that. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Bernie, the real Bernie, the real guy, actually stayed. Uh, with Linkletter. He, he yeah, is he still staying with him right now? Oh, no, no. Let, let, Lock your damn door. No, yes. but yes. That he um, we're is who helped this. provide... Um, no, we're moving into it. Okay. Yeah, that he helped provide the money. I found out later for my scholarship. I knew him very well. I did, uh, like in the movie you saw where he did plays with the college, I did plays with him. He sang at our wedding. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Ten days before he got arrested. Oh my god. Yeah. So, that is insane. I tell you what a small world, man. Yeah. I tell you. So, um, it's very sad when I got caught up that I cried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's say that. But, but well, it's almost, we, we can start. So, when you tell us when you got to, to this Carthage? Is, yeah. When you, why'd you pick Carthage? Why'd you pick Carthage? Um, Carthage? My theater teacher in high school, before I went to performing arts, I stayed in touch with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he recommended me for a scholarship, so I taped an audition for this program. It was a pretty good program for such a small school. I taped my audition and um, they offered me a full scholarship. Is he talking about four years? Two years. Two, was junior oh, two years mm -hmm. for junior college. Mm -hmm. and Where's, where's Carthage at? Where's Carthage it at? is uh, southeast of Dallas, very close to the Louisiana border. Oh, it's right out there. That's what got you. It's probably 45 minutes from Shreveport. Okay. And in fact, and, Shreveport is where I landed. And, and, and yeah. Bernie was deeply involved in the theatrical part of mm -hmm. the college that you went to. Mm -hmm. but, but he, so that, when you, that's, so yeah, how long, so the two years he went there. He was involved. Actually, he was involved. Going, I went a third year. He was very involved with us. Yeah, he was involved before I got there. So we're gonna start off where we left off. Yeah. Oh, I wanna um, show this picture real quick. Wait, wait, wait. Let me do it. So that's a beautiful Valerie and her handsome husband. Oh crap, Cliff. I'm gonna be able to see it so we had to focus. Yeah. Hold on, I can do it. Hold on. Oh. So it's a guy on the far right. Yeah, it's focused. There it is. The tall gentleman. That's Bernie? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Yeah, focus it back. Focus it back. Okay. So what was, what was your thinking when you when you went to this what college was this again? Panola College. Panola College, you're thinking was your thinking behind that that this is this is what you do as an actor, this is what you, you know, this go is to college. That's go well, to college for yeah. that, right? Yeah. That was your thinking. So you had already planned this out, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to college for uh, this. Yeah, well I'd actually um Auditioned for several schools. I was uh, accepted to one in Boston, and then uh, I was going to audition for um, Dramatic Arts Academy, but this was offering a full scholarship. So you, yeah, you put your applications out. They came to back. Several. I auditioned for several colleges. Pick the best one you think. Well, they for. they would have large auditions um, where several colleges would come to a location, and oh. we would audition in front of like thirteen or fourteen schools. Um, so I'd auditioned for several, but this was the only one that offered the best deal. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, just get a plane ticket and pay for a dorm room. You're done. Yeah. So, so you were there for, for three years. Mm -hmm. Of course, at that time, you didn't know that, that Bernie would be famous later. No. No idea. Yeah, Probably. no idea. But he was always involved as always, well. Always. Always. Like, um... What was his deal with that? He just liked performing? He performed. He just liked to sing. He liked to help, uh... The kids, the college kids, he's very supportive of us. Wow. He traveled with us like when we would go to, you know, play festivals like in the college circuit. And, yeah, he traveled with us a lot. He was very involved. Very involved. He was like a, a speech and debate team too. He's involved with everybody. Now he, he was involved as, as a director of the place or something as well? Uh, he helped direct he... music, but he was also in the plays with us sometimes. The first, uh, my first uh, musical there, he was in the play with us. He was in West Side Story with us. So those, so the three years you were there were three years, mm -hmm. and after those three years, what did you do in those three years? You did a lot of a lot of theater, a lot of school. Um, he was involved. Um, I got married at the end of those three years. And that's okay. what I mean. Yeah. So, but uh, I stayed an extra year to get a few more things out of the way. So you have all your credentials, so you yeah. could take this anywhere and sit up. Pretty much. Hire. That's what, that was the plan. Well, the plan was to go to university and go from after. there. Mm -hmm. So, so him being there, he sang for you guys at your wedding. He mm -hmm. was there. Wow. And then you, so after the after you you stayed another year, and you where'd you go after that? Uh, I went to UT. Actually, I went to a cosmetology school first, and then I went to UT uh, in Tyler because I wanted to be, I wanted to come down here, but I wanted to be a big fish in a little pond. Man, you were doing all the right things. Uh, that's what a uh, um, like uh, Roddy Dangerfield. He always talked about. Um, the reason why he was able to do a lot, of, a lot of the road trips and do comedy and everything was because he had a, he was a roofer. Yeah. And so he, he said, always have a job. And even even uh, Joe Rogan talks about that too. That you basically want to have a trade of some kind mm -hmm. that you can take time. And he said the same thing too that you can afford to like if you took cars of comedy. You can almost take it any. You could you could have a job almost anywhere. Anywhere. And I actually do hair and makeup on set sometimes, oh, and I do man. it for plays, and I yeah. So you had it all ready to go. So mm -hmm. after you did that, you went to UT. Mm -hmm. um, so when did the film start coming in? When did all that? Um, I did a few film projects. They were all um, education-based while I was in college. I mostly did theater. Um, I did another series on like divorce, you know, things like that. I was doing those kind of things. Um, when I was in grad school, I actually wrote my first short film and my friend and I directed it and it's terrible. I mean, you can, <laughs> cause we were theater actors. And so things like we didn't right. know to look at the screen. Talking loud and waving your hands. Well, not even that. No, oh, she right, and I, right. that wasn't too bad. But what she and I were doing was it, cause we also were in it because you know, there wasn't an, an abundance of actors in East Texas. So oh, yeah. we got a lot of our friends to do it. We filmed at some diner in Mineola. I um, that was, you yeah, that. yeah. That was so first, that film? was my first short. I mean, I've done TV projects. So this is my first short film. Uh, found these weird, really cool hippie people that filmed it for us. They filmed industrial videos, so some of it looks like an industrial video. <laughs> um, but we didn't know to watch like the screen. So there are like chords in the background. The sound guy oh. is in one shot. Um, there's like light poles. I mean, we didn't know. We were just trying to yeah. make a film. We had no idea. And this is why you were attending where? This is when I was in grad school. I was finishing grad school when I did and, it. And was your short film your thesis? No, we just did it. No, we you did, did it for fun. We just did it because we wanted to do it. Wow. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? My friend Connie and I wrote it. Oh. Yeah. Who directed it? Connie and I directed it. I mean, we didn't have a lot of people. It wasn't like here where you could find. So yeah, so you're you. No, no, this is good. No, but go directing, ahead. editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I sat in the editing room. I did not edit because the, the <laughs> Steve and Donna, the, the couple that filmed it, they um, did a lot of stuff for the courthouse there oh. and filmed industrial videos and things like that. Wow. So these are the people. I got tied up with them actually uh, through another independent film that I was working on that never made it. But that's how I met up with them and networked with them. So, so I mean, so. I'm curious, when did you guys? So I um, was done with grad school and I had found out that there was a lot going on down here. You know, that was when the internet was starting to be more, mm -hmm. you could find more things on the internet. Yeah. This is like yeah. It was like 10 years more, ago. It was affordable too. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so um, I 
submitted and auditioned for him. I auditioned for several fil short films that day, and he was my last one. And what was her name? Debbie? Debbie Hoffman. Yeah, she was the casting director or whatever. But, and I did the Dark Light with you guys. That was my... So that's how, that's so she was a dark light was that's wow. when I met him. Holy crap! Okay, okay. And we just stayed friends. I don't know. We yeah. just um. Yeah. Wow. So so, you, so which before you got the dark light, and and after you were UT, mm -hmm. and just short film you did. Mm -hmm. How many did you do between there? Quite a few. Uh no, I didn't do any because I was in a town. I was I was trying to get an agent. And I was mm -hmm. trying to audition, and I was in a town that that was really hard to do. I did have um, my own theater, com theater company with a guy that I went to grad school with for a couple of years. We did like one show a year, you know, it was what all we could afford to do. Yeah. Um, so I was doing that. I was also doing um, hair and makeup for like the opera I had done there one time. And I was doing little things like that, driving back and forth to Austin. Um, I was coaching with Gabe Foles at that time. Mm -hmm. oh my God. I got my agent yeah. right after I did the film with you. I mean, so I was trying. I was really trying. Yeah, yeah you're where, where, where did the the hair and makeup thing come in? Uh, I just because I did um, cosmetology school. I actually. When did you do? Yeah, where did you find I room start, for that? Well, I just did it between, <laughs> <laughs> did it between degrees. Um, I started um, when I was at Panola. One day, I was the hair and makeup person. I don't even remember how it started, and it was something that I was good at. My grandfather was a hairdresser, so I don't know if it's like in my blood or, you know. Um, and I suddenly I was like, I designed um, hair and makeup for several shows. I got awards at play festivals for doing it. I did some special effects makeup. Um, I started to get heavy into special effects, but then that got expensive. So, um, so I can do some special effects, and I just... It was something that I was good at, and so when I looked into, okay, how does one become a makeup artist? was be an esthetician and I thought well that's just skincare and so I thought well I'll take it a step further because then I can work while I'm in school do hair anyway. yeah and which has served me well in the past although sometimes it sucks because a lot of my friends uh, that make films now will not cast me and I think it's because I can do hair and makeup you're more valuable in that position than, uh, than as an actor and so no, 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 but no. but I've worked as a hairdresser all through mm -hmm. finishing my bachelor's in grad school and I, one of the reasons I chose UT Tyler was because I could design the hair and makeup for the show and be in the play mm -hmm. and also have the opportunity to design hair and makeup for a production. Wow. Yeah, so, and I still do hair now, I mean, because it's lucrative, yeah. um, it's rather flexible. I mean, I can't take like extended, like I couldn't take several months off, but if I planned well, like let's say I booked a feature that filmed four weeks. I could potentially plan financially, farm my clients out, or schedule them as such, where I could work for six weeks on film if I had to. That is, yeah. you know, how was your experience in dark light? <laughs> um, you know, to me, it was. Uh, I'm professional. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I didn't have. I mean, apart from honeymoon in Vegas I mean, yeah. and, and my yeah. film set, oh, I wow, had nothing okay. to compare it to. So, yeah. to me, it was very exciting. Um, I was very nervous because this was something, I mean, I know I'd done stuff as a kid or whatever growing up, but this was something I had done outside of my comfort zone. I mean, you know, theater or whatever, but I didn't know everything I'd done, even studying theater. In college, I was nervous too, but once I got to know the people in my theater department as a small, it became a comfort zone. This was stepping into something where I didn't know. That was the mother-daughter scene in the, in the room, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. So, so after, so during this time, when you're you're here, when did Bernie when the Bernie thing happen? Bernie happened ninety seven. Ninety seven. So this this is oh this is way before this is when you're going to UT, going to college. No, Bernie. So like when he got arrested or when the movie yeah, happened. Yeah, when, 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 when he got arrested. He got arrested in ninety seven. My husband and I were married uh, in July of ninety seven, and he was arrested ten days later. And wait, so with that picture ten, is ten days? days before, and actually, oh and that, none of this is so. In so the he movie. had her in the freezer the whole yeah. Oh so, my um, god! He's yeah. just staying away. So I got laid in the freezer. So at home. what's, like, what's what interesting? What's interesting is you, if you've seen the movie, seen Bernie the movie. was truly generous, like they said in the movie. It was not an exaggeration. And so that weekend, uh, we found out like later in the papers that they had contacted him while he was there. And before he'd given people gifts like cars, helped them with their businesses, things like that. And he gave Cliff and I, um, he gave us $200. Wow. 
Was it her money? Gift. Was it her I don't, I don't know. <laughs> which, which is a lot the of money. money. No, I don't know. Which is a lot oh. of money, but we thought, well, that's odd because other people he had given larger... Not that we weren't grateful, we were very grateful, yeah. but if you think about it, that was, that, you know, that was kind of a, that's odd, it, we would have thought, because we were close to him, but his funds were cut off, things were frozen while he was there. Like, the old lady was him. dead and she couldn't withdraw money from the no. bank, that's why. Right. <laughs> um, what, yeah, so that's, so when we got that call, oh my God. That's um, crazy. it was actually very devastating, because we were close to him, it was, um, yeah. it was like somebody died, because this was not the man that I knew at all. Yeah. At all. This, this is not something that, you know, it's, so that people know, this, this is not someone that you had uh, just kind of as an acquaintance. This is someone who was involved in your life. In my life. In other words, this is like a best friend. It was kind of like family. It was like family. He fa took like care family. of us. And he right. Mm -hmm. Right. He was involved in your so, theater. He was in your wedding. He gave me voice lessons when I was in college for singing. Yeah. yeah. And he was a good singer. So yeah. when when do you think... I can tell you. I remember when it happened. Now, like, in retrospect, I didn't know at the time. Okay. Um, so the night that he did it, we um, dress rehearsals for the musical, the last one, he would pay for, like, a big, like, pizza party or whatever. There was a pizza hut right across the street from the college. And he had been called out. He wasn't in that play. He was just a musical directing. Mm -hmm. um, and he had been called by her, I guess, or what he left. And so we went ahead and finished up, went to the pizza party, and he showed up late, um, and he was not as put together as he always was. Like, his hair was still wet. This is in November, so it's cold. His hair was still wet. He had, like, a white shirt and, you know, like, khakis on, and he was sort out of sorts. He wasn't, I mean, he didn't look awful, but you could tell that there was something amiss. Something off, something off, yeah. Um, and he actually sat with me and Cliff, because we were the last ones to get there, and everybody would ask him how's margie doing how's, oh, she's were you fine. guys were you guys so we approach? sat with him no we were not we you never made our, we never made ourselves public that we knew him right. no because we had thought about it you know because at that time the media blew up it was oh like, they're gonna be all over you like like, like, like that's just and that's the cops the cops are gonna come ask you which questions yeah. yeah no they didn't because but, we weren't tied to him in the way that other people were okay so oh, let's try and it we back we're gonna go back a little bit okay, okay. We're not doing an interrogation, man. Come on, sorry. No, 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 no. Good story, good story. We're not doing an interrogation of her own. It's over yeah, here. Yeah, I know. But he, came, he came in, you know, something was... Something was off. out of sorts. That okay. was the night that... And the only reason so we know it was the night he did it was because we'd read it in a newspaper article. And we we, all, we went, oh, my God. So we were... So he had just done... You just had dinner with the devil. Yeah. You got dinner with a killer. But he acted, he acted uh, something different. Sure. You got to write a book about this. Uh, <laughs> dinner, with a, dinner with a killer. No, I, it was, um, uh, I actually wrote but, to him three times in prison. So. But, he, but he was uh, exonerated. He was let go. He, yeah, but yeah. he's still, um, I think the family's still going after him for financial stuff. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I did write to him a few times in prison. I sent him a picture of uh, us with Jack Black when I went to the premiere. Um, which he thought was cool. Wait a minute, what do you mean he was exonerated? He's out now. He's out. He's living, that's why he was living with Linkletter for a little while there. Mm -hmm. I thought that was only because, well, I'm confused about that. But anyway. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing to, uh, to carry yeah, on. Yeah, they apparently like, reviewed other yeah. evidence. That he was, was, he was basically pushed to it because she was just a real mean person. And it was, you know, and it's like he just re reacted to, I don't yeah. know what. I only met her like once or twice. How was, so. how was she? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, she she's was. mean? I, you know, I, she wasn't. Um, so when I met her, she was in the director, the department director's office, and I came in and she said, This oh, is she was Margie part. Nugent. Well, she hung out just like in the film. She hung out sometimes. And I said, Hi, it's nice to meet you. And she said, Yeah. That was it. <laughs> like, yeah. Whatever. Your competition. That Your competition for <laughs> I, I think she just. I think she was there because he. Uh, whenever she did get involved, he, he pushed her there. She would come to see our shows and all that kind of stuff. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. So, so after so after that happened, just all this craziness, you and you going to college. And well, we had just gotten married, and I yeah. uh, we came. We actually were living in Vegas. Came back to Texas to go to school. Yeah. Um, I just. Move forward. I did cosmetology school, then went yeah. to UT, then. You okay. Know. And now, now let's move fast forward. You already said those things. Mm -hmm. Now you did dark light. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. And, and you I wanted to move. Decided to move to Austin. How would? Did you did you 
enjoy being on the set of Dark Ride, but you said that made you feel uncomfortable. No, I mean, it was scary, <laughs> like, you could try Straight up with professionals, man. Really? I did not, I, <laughs> well, because you did, you, it was it, out of my comfort zone, so I was afraid, of, well, but it was still stepping out of a box that I hadn't been in, in a sense. To me, that was my big break. So you were thinking, like, which one of these guys here has a lady in their freezer? Right? It, no, no. <laughs> I knew Luis did, but, no, I just mean that, I, to me, it was, it was a break, and so I didn't want to mess it up. It was out of my comfort yeah. zone. It was so after Dark Knight, what did you after that? Uh, God, what did I do? I think I did... So you, look, you, you look it up and you ask her the question. Oh, I have to pull it up for you. Um, I can't. I know we were trying to move. Can you get Alfred? Yeah, Alfred you know what? Uh, I remember... I remember, right there. Here yeah, you know. and I, I remember you wanting to move to Austin because that's where everything was happening. Yeah, I was trying at that time. I think I was just trying to get an agent, and then I did. Um, so what? So what made you live to? You were still living when you got to when you school in, in Northeast Texas. Mm -hmm. You guys were living there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you guys there. was your husband from the area too? Cliff was from um, Beaumont, Southeast Beaumont. I, we had gone to school together at Panola. A buddy of his from down there brought him up to go to school there, and oh, okay. he was in our technical theater department, that's how we met. Oh, so you guys signed up there for a couple of years, and then said, let's go to mm -hmm. Vegas, and then come to Austin? Well, we got married in Vegas, we thought we were going to live there, because I was going to go to UNLV. Oh, okay, okay. Good. And he wanted to come back, so... Oh, you had family there still in Vegas, mm -hmm. mom and dad were still in mm -hmm. Austin. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I did a lot of agent submitting. I did, uh, I got an agent with, um... DVA Talent and then Calliope in San Antonio and I did like extra work for Friday Night Lights about that time oh. Friday Night Lights was happening uh -huh. um, and I'd made several drives down to do extra work because I thought that's what you did you had to, you know, had to build Yeah, I know, I didn't think when I was like, oh, waste of time, you know Well, it's, it's, it's fun, if you can afford it, if, you can make, if it's a yeah. positive in money, do it you know? But it, it was hard though, I mean, yeah. I could, there's one time I did a shoot for that, you know, I'm just an extra and I drove all the way from Tyler yeah did a night shoot and drove home. So I remember driving one night. It was really worth it. Like three o'clock in the morning, yeah. three hour drive back home. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's experience, it's just the experience. Yeah, it's but I was trying, I was doing whatever they told you to do. I mean, there were a lot of times. Just tell you go, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, and there were a lot of times that I, you know, drove down to Austin for a day and I would coach with Gabe and I'd go have lunch. My, uh, my friend Connie that directed the film with me came wow. with me one time and Gabe coached me and then we hung out for a little bit and then I went home. So you're working um, with Gabe. What year was you working with Gabe? Oh god, I don't remember. So I've been here eight years, so probably a couple of years before that. Whoa. Sometime in that time frame. Oh my. so you're talking about uh maybe two thousand no, two thousand five, two thousand six oh, okay. so I was working. Two thousand five, so that's when you're working with Gabe. Mm hmm How did you how did you uh, get with him as far as like um, coaching? How did you my agent uh, recommended that I coach with him. What, is, what does that mean? What is it? She had a list of coaches and she gave me these are people you could coach with and I just kind of went down the list. I looked him Oh, you as an actress, coach, yeah. them you being your coach. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you're saying. Okay. Uh-huh. And so I just looked all the coaches up, called them one by one, and uh, when I looked him up, he seemed to be uh, the most like personality fit-wise. Yeah. And then I was able to talk to him and email back and forth, and he just seemed really nice. Yeah, really I would love to coach with him awesome. again. I would coach him today. He always looks like that, okay? Really tall. Very tall. He has a cleany sweet look about mm -hmm. him. Uh, loose I've Crossing. Heard a lot, I've heard a lot of them. Love loose them. Crossing. That's the one I did with Connie. That's the one. That's, that's the one. That's the, one. the one. first one. Loose oh, Crossing. Yeah. Yeah, go down the list. That's pretty okay, cool. Okay, that's Loose Crossing. But Loose Crossing, we have in the set the late. You did that after Dark Line? No, I think I did it before. Oh, man, we're I didn't listen. Right. Hurry up, man. We I have three minutes before. before first step. Supporting. Breathe. Uh, breathe. I was a pregnant lady. I was doing hair and makeup for that, and they lost their <laughs> pregnant lady. And so they filled me up, and I did a shot where I sat down on a bench as a pregnant lady. Nice. Independent film or studio film? Independent. Independent. Awesome. Feature film? Uh, deep in the heart. Oh, deep featured. in the heart is featured. So that was the uh, one about... Um, I actually had an audition for that film. What's the, the oh. actor from Napoleon Dynamite, Uncle Rico? What is his name? Oh, the, yeah, Bob Yeah, Dynamite. so I was yeah. in three scenes um, AA meetings with him. 
Oh, I'll take a while we're at the 4-H guy. See, this, this helps the having, the, having the resume yeah. to, to go down the line. That's what the movie was about. And so I featured, I didn't have any lines, but I was in three scenes as nice. like Alcoholics Anonymous. Because that guy. How was, how was it on the set on that? Yeah. Um, it was fun. Everybody was nice. He was really nice. Um, mm. You know. I met him once too, yeah. I was like, hey, you're uh he goes, let's go. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, when he came in, when he came in, we were all in wardrobe and he came in to ask wardrobe something and we're all, it's Uncle Rico. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I still can't remember that poor guy's name. He's remember, a good actor. I remember yeah, him from a movie he did where he got shot in the head with lightning. He goes, how many times you get you struck a lightning? The great outdoors? Yeah. I'm like, are you sure? Nine times. He goes like that. That's where I remembered it from. I was like, hey, you're the lightning dude. And he goes, yeah. I goes, like, that's, I remember from, that's where I remember it from. No, 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 no. That's where I remember it from. Yeah. I was like, hey, so, you know, I mean, you. that was cool. You know, that was, um, <laughs> probably on that set, that was where I started realizing that this may be all I get to do is stuff like this. Uh, you know, this is, yeah. No, let's go to Bourbon next week. No, so, no, no, wait, wait, keep going. There's a voice, there's a voice, she did voice. It's a lot of voice, I do a lot of But I want to talk about that separately, on the voice thing. Uh, but no, come on, dude, come so, on, we ain't no, gonna, come on, stop yakking, get to it. Yeah, the next one is Bernie. No. Bernie was Don't. my next biggest, yes. um, oh, okay. we did Alfred. My bad, my bad. Who's we the did one, Alfred who's before? the one reading this? You I, I, I have glasses. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I did Alfred before Bernie. <laughs> Oh, okay. So we did Alfred. Alfred, and Alfred, Alfred was cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You yeah. did Alfred before. You, yeah, you what they. Out of order. No, they tell you to list it in order of importance. No. Ah, yeah. baloney. No, 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 that's, no, that's what they true. said. They put. That, that's blood. why. That's why I knew Loose Crossing was done right. before Dark Knight. Right, Light. but see, yeah. look, there's yeah. American you showed Crime. It to me. American Crime, right yeah. at the top. That's what they. Uh, and you know what? That's what they know. tell you to do. Um, I don't know but so Alfred, Alfred, Alfred was the one you did. Talk about that one. So Alfred, I also wrote that um, with my friend Connie that I did Lose Crossing oh, okay. with. And what inspired you to yeah. write Alfred? Okay, so I, I might get a little... Countdown. Make All sure right. some focus. Recording. <coughs> All right. So, so after... Uh, you know what? You're 5'3". That's pretty short. You're 5'3", <laughs> really? Yeah. That's like... Patty's like... And four ten you... <laughs> you're way... Don't put my weight on there. <laughs> and I'm honest on there. Don't two, tell it. 250. <laughs> I'm 110 pounds like everybody else and I'm a size 2. You know, you know, uh, yeah, this is wrong because I, that, that, I'm not going to say what the weight Why is. Why are you judging her to you know, size? saying I'm heavier? No, lighter. That's what I'm saying. No, that's this what is, I weigh. This, is, this is not right. Yes, it is. You weigh enough for your muscles? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's got muscle is more than you know. Yes. Fat. So, it's so got for the last like five minutes we've been arguing <laughs> over over Bernie, which we need to get off that subject because it's not about him. Okay, you know what? <laughs> so after, so <laughs> what, 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 what inspired what inspired you to do Alfred? To do Alfred. Yeah. Okay, so um, Alfred is the story about a man that's just passed. You guys know, but for those that don't, and he wants to. Um, uh, say goodbye to his family. They, he died and they weren't there. No, no, what is the inspiration? Well, that's the premise of the story. So what happened was um, my best friend that I grew up with, mm -hmm. um, her dad had just passed, like literally um, passed away and... And what friend was this? Um, her name's Paula. Yeah, back in Vegas. Oh, wow. Cliff keeps texting me. Tell him not. No, he needs an address for somebody. Go ahead, Can we go ahead. pause that or no, something? No, 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 in the go middle? Go ahead. Go ahead. We're not going to edit this out. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should. Um, Hold up. We're waiting. So, so you so, do. Cliff. So your dad was, just passed. Stop it. Cliff. Cliff. <laughs> Cliff. <laughs> you know, I can do this show with no, myself. Stop. No, I know. I'll right? fire you. I know, and I saw. Okay, I saw, there we that go. That puppet did way better so, than you. So Paula's dad had passed away, um, and he was actually quite elderly. He was 92, so he was like 60 when she was born. So flash forward, he's passed away, and she had just wow. left the hospital and called me. It was, um, sorry, I grew up with this man, too. So, uh, it was about 11 o'clock at night, my time, she called. And she said, I didn't get to say goodbye. I didn't get to say goodbye. I left to go home and take a nap, but I didn't get to say goodbye. And so I thought, well, what if she did? What if he was there? And that is the story. So that is um, my memorial for her. Mm -hmm. You told her this to kind of comfort her too. To yeah. Comfort her too. Mm -hmm. Damn. 
So, and um, her parents were married uh, 30 plus years. And what was interesting is the couple that we cast was also married for real in real life, and they had been married about the same time. Um, I ended up playing the character based off of her, and I had not intended to. We tried to find, remember, we tried to find another actress because I did not mm -hmm. want to be in it, but at the same time, I saw that, she yeah. was happy that I was, but that's yeah. where it came from. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I think, I think the, the hand, the old man talking. Yeah, yeah and like, a lot of that was... Um, and I, I like the, 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 the tagline. What is the tagline? Mm -hmm. What the tagline is? Why does it take, it takes a moment to say hello and forever to say goodbye. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was good. I, I really like, I'm really happy that, that I got involved in that one. Yeah, that was, um, I wish I had sent it to more festivals. I often wonder if it was because it was a memorial or a tribute that maybe that's why I have it. Um, it's kind of personal. Yeah. It is very, yeah, yeah. definitely. Alfred was, um, it was a challenge. Yeah. It was a challenge because it was not only was it because of person. You got to be respectful, not you know. So there's a certain, right. certain amount of respect to you. Right. Do to, yeah. to the the what would what were the challenges for you on Alfred? Well, we had one day to shoot. Okay. We were shooting. Um, God bless Anthony, but I was like, please don't be creative. <laughs> Just get this done, and he got creative. And some of it was really good, and I appreciate it. But yeah. my goal was not. I was not worried about how fancy a shot was. I wanted to tell a story. That's all mm -hmm. I. I wanted to do this tribute, um, so it was very stressful to me. We were in uh, my husband's uh, warehouse at the time. He was managing a medical warehouse, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was very stressed about being there on their property. On their, you know, even though it was okay, it was still very stressful to be at his place of employment. And I wanted to make sure that yeah. we were respectful of the environment. And that we were, so that was stressful. And then just wanting to make sure the story was told and that uh, yeah. she didn't see it for probably a year or so i was i was afraid to show it to her she didn't see it for a long time so we posted it on facebook did now, she see it when we posted why, it why 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 did you take me to direct it um because anytime i've worked with you we always we have a good rapport we all have good rapport anytime i've worked with you guys i have there is a comfort level there and i knew because we've been such good friends, um, that I could bring you something that was that personal and you'd respect it. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, my best friend met you and she loved you just because she met you. Remember, she mm -hmm. I made her watch Prison Break so that she could see <laughs> what this was. Um, and um, I just knew that you would respect something personal. I I, I would say the one thing that we were there was a time constraint. We, yeah, we, we didn't have much time. And I, I, I wish we had more time. Yeah, but as, we just had a, the one day in that warehouse. As a director, mm -hmm. I mean, I just felt I needed to spend more time with the actors in, you know, in directing. And I, uh, we just didn't have that much time. It, the, the outcome was still great. I mean, yeah. but I just really wish that um, uh, the time was there to direct, but everything was yeah. more like we have to be out of here by a certain time. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. but we we did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is, is that we we, we said it's a wrap. We filmed it. I think the, the thing that got me when I realized it was like based on a true story, I was like, "Wow, this is cool." Yeah. This. yeah, I really yeah. liked it. There were some things that, yeah. um, and I referenced him a lot. Things that I mean, a lot of what John said um, yeah. was what Paula's dad would say. I mean, I really. And no, the you know decent, yeah, decent uh, special effects and how everything worked out. It worked out for the best. I mean, we, yeah. we, had, we ran into problems, we troubleshoot it, yeah. we, we solved it. Where can, where is, so it's Alfred, mm -hmm. where can we see it? On Vimeo. Vimeo? Yeah. You can just type in, you can type in just Alfred, Vimeo, and uh, you can type in Valerie's name, Valfrazy. Valfrazy, Alfred, Vimeo. You should be able to find it, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was good, I mean, it, mm -hmm. At the post production was also challenging. Mm -hmm. There were certain things that I wanted. Yeah, there were certain things that mm -hmm. I wanted yeah. on there. That, you know, no, we're not. no, you were right because I think no, when when, when Anthony kept coming back with his ideas and you came, you're like, no. Nope. And, I, and, and I, well, because he knew I, yeah. I wanted to keep it simple. I think for me it was a simple thing. Mm -hmm. This is just a man saying goodbye to his family or them saying goodbye yeah. to him. 
I was not interested in having a bunch of special effects. The actors were to carry that. I mean, we had some, but you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want anything fancy. Whole I didn't story. want... But I was pushing yeah. for the special, the little bit of fancy stuff. Because I remember, mm -hmm. I, think you're, I remember you telling me, well, I just, I just wanted to. Yeah. I said no, but if we have this, this just actually sets it up. I feel this. I really, yeah. really. You, yeah. And remember, after a while, you did say, oh, oh it was good. It was no, good. it turned out really what well. What did uh, she find? So she did finally see it. Oh, I'm gonna cry. And the, oh. oh, and the music, music the music there? at the credit. Yeah, it was perfect. Oh, the music was. She was. Perfect. She. Um, what did she say? She just said thank you. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm cheering up. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's 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 better than uh, any f film festival yeah. accepting the film. Yeah. Because it's it's um, it's been accepted by the, no one but the best. I think I think when I when I think you know the, the a lot of the research I've been doing on, on ancestry on my my lineage, mm -hmm. the what I look for is is links and, and crumbs and, and very books and on the, right. the family, but the thing I think the thing about this is that in your story too mm -hmm. is that a hundred years from now, two hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, if it's still around, this this footage, this data information mm -hmm. will be around hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. And that they'll be able to do to see these stories about if if, if your friends has offspring like. Mm -hmm. three generations from now yeah that they can revert back to this and to kind of yeah. see that and mm -hmm. I think I think that's really important is is uh, I think that's what that's what that's what I like about this storytelling mm -hmm. your experiences yeah. is is a link to the past to you know just because people you know right I don't know if that makes any sense is yeah because because I, I think for me it's been very very difficult for me to to find information on my family in England mm-hmm and it's like, man, I wish there was more, I wish there was more books. I wish somebody wrote notes and. And this is one way to do it. Yes, and that's, yeah. yeah, and that's how I write. I um, I write too, not just screenplays. Actually, I don't like writing sc screenplays. I found that out through oh. the process. I enjoy writing books, and um, I write what I know. And even if it's not exactly about that, there's a homage to. Yeah. My experiences and my family and my situation, because that's how I know to tell a story. You know the the one thing the one thing I noticed. I, I was telling my aunt Sada one time, I was telling her, I don't know what my third great grandmother's name is. And so imagine this, imagine your your grandson's mm -hmm. grandson is not going to know your name. Yeah. How fucked up is that? It's weird, it's very deep. Mm -hmm. You should drink more for it. <laughs> Drinking makes me so yeah. Makes so it was a very good experience and I was glad that I did it. <laughs> All right, drink. I killed two bottles. Woo yeah, drink it makes it smart. I drink for the past. Drink to my yeah. ancestors. Now you know what the next thing is. Uh, yeah, what happened to Alfred? Burn. So I, well, I mean, there was like a few commercials and things like that in there. Um, National commercials? No, I did Time Warner Cable somewhere <gasps> in there, oh, and cool. um, I don't remember. I did some voiceover work. Uh, Bernie one? was my. Um, I did a voiceover work for Guitar Center a few years ago. Oh, no way! Um, but that was like right after Bernie. Bernie okay. was probably my biggest thing after that. I mean, I did plays and things that let's, were Let's very talk good. about the yeah, so, audition for Bernie. So I had to beg my agent. And, and, and let's say this, uh, who um, was Bernie the film about the director and the audition? Yeah, right. so, so I had to beg my agent. I had to tell her several times. I know this man, I have pictures, I, have, I know this man. And she finally, I guess, talked to Beth Sepko, the casting director, and said you need to get her in. And so they sent me the sides, I coached with Gabe, and like the next day after I finally got in touch with my agent for the, I don't know how many times. Yeah. Um, so I read for the part of a person or character that had been worked with Bernie in the theater department. So it was a similar character, my, character to myself. I think I had like three lines. Um, and uh, Linklater came out from behind the table and shook my hand, which was very like... Did he know? Yeah, he, well, he, he said, I guess he had in his notes when we talked about that, that I knew him. So I showed he, him my wedding picture, but he came from the table and shook my hand in the audition. Because he, he really liked Bernie. He really did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> and I auditioned and I didn't know for a month. I just assumed I didn't look it. And then, 
I booked it, you know, or they called you me. You got said, it? Yeah, but I didn't know for a month after the audition. Uh, and they started filming, and I just assumed. That they didn't get, get, you, get the part. Yeah. But you did get the part. I did. And so we filmed in a theater in Lockhart. Um, I was there for the whole day, and as the first time somebody besides uh, Patty for Dark Light that had done my hair and makeup and uh, I had done it <laughs> myself or I was doing hair and makeup. So it's very so exciting. So this is, this, is, this is the biggest thing you've done so that far? That was the biggest thing I had done so far. Oh um, and okay. uh, I'm just one of the town gossip her name was Robin. <laughs> and she was one of the theater kids that he worked with. And uh, I really hoped that it would make it, but I kind of knew from the script. Yeah. I was the only character my age, my type. And if you watch the movie, I'm just not weird enough. I'm just not. I, you know. You know, too normal. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, and she was saying a lot of the same things that the other, because he filmed it like documentary style, like he oh. interviews people. And so I was saying the same things that other people were. So I kind of had a sense that it probably wouldn't make. But I was heartbroken. They called me a few days before the premiere, and I just cried. And then I said, "Well, can I at least have my footage?" And they said, "Sure." Well, I never got my footage. Nah, so. <laughs> but you know, I I saw the film Bernie, uh -huh. and it's on Netflix. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's on oh, Netflix. Cool. Yeah, I did see it. I haven't seen it. It's a good movie. It's real good. It, it doesn't go all the way with documentary style and stuff. It's it's a good collection. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> after watching after watching the whole film. It made sense why they cut you out. Oh sure, that I didn't scene. fit. It, you, I didn't you didn't fit, fit with anybody else who were older. Really? The majority no. of the people were, were, were older. I was the only young older. person, and yeah. not that I'm all that in a bag of tricks, <laughs> but I had just colored my hair another color, and they did my makeup beautifully, and I looked beautiful. And then here's all these people. I mean, so they're... ugly, 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 pretty. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can't have her in there. <laughs> no. No, but I didn't look like a regular. Carny, you look like Carney folk. Yeah, I did not look like Carney folk at all. But it, it, so. it makes sense. It would have been like. It would have been like. Oh, it would have been out of place. Uh, well, yeah, I wasn't exactly. weird. Well, like Jack Black, come on, playing. Yeah. Uh, no, the, the town folk. You would. You have to see the film to understand. You have to see why. it. Okay. After I saw the film, I called her up and said, "I, I understand. I understand why yeah. they cut you off." I was still that's cool. That's cool. You actually, you, like you guys kind of knew that. that that's that's mm -hmm. insight. That's pretty good insight you guys have. Like. I, yeah, I, had I think it, it happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a sense. Damn it. it was but she also knew that based on the scripture she read that it's, mm -hmm. it's off. It's like, it's, it's like off. throwing a wrench. You throw the wrench in yeah. there and say, well, that's, that makes no sense. It doesn't go with the film. I mean, maybe if I had like missing teeth or something, it would have happened. No. <laughs> no. But you, but you went to the, the premiere. I went to the premiere and I got to meet Jack Black. And, How tall is he? Um, He's not he's much shorter, taller than he's me. Shorter than you? He's, shorter. he's about five seven, five between five seven and five nine. So he's taller than me, oh, but I'm not. Okay. But Bernie was like over six feet tall. So. Whoa! Wait a minute. Hollywood not being accurate in the real stories. No. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but. <laughs> so anyway. What? So. So after, so after you did what happened after you did Bernie? Um, just voiceover work. I did some plays. Um. So, for, so from, things kind of slowed Bernie, down. Bernie happened. When did the actual movie happen? 2003? Something like that. 2004 or something. 2004? Like so it's been a while. Wow, that's what I said. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Maybe it was like four or five years ago. No, it wasn't no, 2000. Wait, wait, wait. No, you wait off. 2011? Wasn't that long ago? It was four or five years ago. Oh, okay, 2011. So I did, you know, I did like some some small commercial things. Um, nothing really major because what ended up happening was. I um, am an artist for a hair company. Actually, I just left this company, but I was an artist for them for five years. So I was doing like hair shows um, and going into salons and doing trainings because then Cliff decided he wanted to be a chef. Um, so I was just taking acting classes and every once in a while, like I did breathe when I was doing that. I did another film called The Gift, little things here and there, but I couldn't really push as hard because I was traveling to supplement the income. Now, you know what? I, I want to interrupt there for, for a moment because that's interesting. This is the voiceover. Talent. Yeah, I did voiceover. That's how, is that real competitive? Real competitive? Did, yeah. You know, it's how, really competitive. How did you get into voiceover? Because you have I a very unique, a, you have a very unique voice, by the way. So it's very yeah. normal. I took a... <laughs> no, I compared, I took a, I compared it to the other actors. I took a voiceover class and I got a microphone and my agent would submit me Why? and I started what, recording. Where do you have time for all these things you're doing? Jesus Christ, you're like... <laughs> Um, you're, well, you're, you're, you're having killers sing at your wedding, you're, you're yeah. doing makeup, um, you're traveling doing the country. Yeah. Where, um, did you take, where did you take the course? Tell, tell uh, Liz Reader at Studio E. 
Is she, she's she's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, she's pretty she's good. She's the main one when it comes to voiceover. I uh, guess. Like, there's other Wait, so, so after, after you did the work we for Bernie until now. I was doing done... interweaving things like that voiceover and stuff. Like, I even did a voiceover for a documentary that Vince Vaughn's sister produced. <gasps> um, I didn't meet them at all. I mean, I recorded no. all in my house with my little microphone and I think I made 200 bucks, but. It, yeah. can too, it can. Yeah. So, 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 is the voiceover? So, you're doing voiceover work now? Um, I haven't done anything voiceover in a long time. I've done a lot of auditions, but I haven't done any voiceover in a long time. Hey, but you did, so, is that an awesome, is that an awesome, awesome thing that's been around for a while now? Because I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's kind of all over. There are things that, like, for example, the uh, Valerie Vaughn's project. Um, I think they're based out of Chicago or something, and mm -hmm. I just recorded here remotely. So yeah, there is a there's a documentary on Netflix where it talks about um, the voiceover actors. God, I can't remember what the hell it's called. Mm -hmm. But they they were it, it's like the the people who do voiceover work were actually who you wouldn't recognize them. Mm -hmm. Those guys do voiceover work for like you name it cartoons, video games, whatever, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then I'm you have that. the actors like you know yeah that do, yeah, do it and they like you know what fuck off we were here first right like get out of here oh who do I I have to be an actor to, to be all famous and everything and everyone know my face and then I can do voiceover work? Yeah. It's like, fuck you. We, we've been here for a long time. We, we know our deal. Right. And it was a really good documentary and actually, I, I kind of I agree with them. Like, yeah, yeah actors who, who, who get into voiceover work, yeah. they're taking food out of their mouths when they're doing that. They got enough money, man. But at the, end of the, yeah, at the end of the day, it's who sounds good or who they think they can yeah. sell it. How, but recognizable voices are always like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But how hard was it for you to get into voiceover? It's really hard. I what, think it's what, harder, almost it? harder than being an actor. That's what, yeah, so, exactly. tell, tell, because tell there's so that. many that do it. Like uh, my best friend Paula, her husband does voiceover work. He's a studio in his house. I have a stupid microphone. Uh, you talking about? You guys go who, on Paul's husband? Uh, Paul's husband, husband, husband. His name is Rob. He does Rob. voiceover work. So these, you, you're studio. it's kind of like independent striking out kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and and to get in there. You have to take the course. If you don't take, you don't course, have to. You can just. It's all about timing. The, what the course do, helped me do was. Pay I can do voices. Oh, it's time. <laughs> the, the class. I would suggest anybody take at least a workshop because it um, mm -hmm. makes you aware of that. There's a timing to everything, and there's a cadence, and there's a pace that is different from acting. But you know how hard is it to get the voiceover because they want to see. Give us your demo. Here's the thing. Give us your demo. I don't have a demo. Reel. I have one. Damn. But. I recorded one. You record it, or record yourself talking on your microphone on your computer. Make your own reel. You know that. Is that what I'm even talking about? That's how I started. You talk. About tell me about that. I literally. Yeah, started. I sound like you now, right? My. <laughs> tell me how. No, no. This is because it's always. Well, do Are you, you thinking about? You're thinking about it, aren't you? Always, always. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> this reader told us what kind of microphone to buy, and I did, and I. That's it. And then I actually was at Paula's house one summer yeah. after I'd been doing voiceover classes and was able to record a demo, but you could, at Rob's studio, but you could easily, it's out. You could Damn it. easily. Yeah, this is gonna go longer. Yeah. This appears again. Awesome. Are we recording? I'll buy 10 of them! <laughs> <laughs> Don't play that. Are you doing it? Is it recording? Stop! Shh! Stop pretty sexy. Yeah. Stop pretty sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I booked it and I have like a bad cold when I took the other. You smoke cigarettes? You smoke more cigarettes. <laughs> we heard the first time. All you do is muffling your ears, muffling it out. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. You're muffling it out. Have a rocking weekend. I don't think that that's good. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Yeah. That sounds pretty strong. Yeah. So I recorded that in the studio. Kick my ass. Just, uh, some voices like uh, that. How many voices work have you ever done? Have you done? Uh, I have done that I've been paid for. I've done three. Well, wait, what does that mean? <laughs> well, because I did like a voiceover in a film for a friend of mine, things like that. Oh, okay, yeah, that's. That I've been paid for three projects. 
So, you know, so you just, you, what inspired you to do this whole voiceover mm -hmm. thing? You just like, um, it's this? just, well, no, my agent was just like, I think you should take these voiceover classes with Liz Reader, and she just started submitting me. I don't know, I just, because I guess because the way I sound, I don't know. What is your voice compared to? Six. What is my voice compared to? To another actress. Six. Uh, I was told for a long time, uh, Kathleen Turner. Someone else. I don't know, that's who I was told oh, years ago. The one in Cheers. Oh, Kirstie Alley. <laughs> That too. You also got yeah, yeah, yeah. And a little bit of the look. Can you see so. the little bit of the no, look? I don't think so. No. I see a little bit of that. The the the. the not not. I mean, when she was thinner. The cool. Remember that. The coolest thing. The coolest thing that I've heard so far was uh, Mad Max uh, Fury Road, when the guy mm -hmm. the, the Immortan Joe. Yeah. Oh my God! It's his thing. Uh, I mean, was it? I wasn't saying. I don't know. It's something in the. I mean, there's definitely. He's, he's, just, he's yelling yeah. from a distance. Yeah. It sounds like a smoker's voice, mm -hmm. but it just it just sounds like oh, it's just that that's like cool fucking. Yeah. It's just like. It it's just, all where you place your voice and yeah. where you. I mean, it's really having voice control. I can sing, and so I think that helps. Ah. Um, not that the voiceover actors, I'm sure they all can't. I mean, they don't all sing, I'm sure. But I think that helps. And you learn to use and expand the range of your voice when you're doing Because they, they talk about they talk about yeah. how they, they, they can do different it's all, character voices. It's all pitches and yeah. where you're putting it in your body, how you're using your diaphragm, how you're throwing your voice. It's a very... So you know what? This thing's already shit. Yeah. Now, do you have... A separate agent for No, voiceover. right right same now one. I have the same one. You can have a separate agent, but here in Texas, I mean mm -hmm. because I'm an actor that does voiceover, it's my same agent right now okay. and I don't have the um, facilities in my house to be able to push myself and get an agent and record in my home. Okay, so yeah. you know what? Let's go through the step. For those who are interested in getting into voiceover, what do you recommend step one? Recording step a demo reel. Um, if you can mm -hmm. take a workshop, some people that's not Feasible, so listen to commercials. Workshop, who do you recommend? Uh, Liz Reader is the only person I know here now. There are other people since, but I don't do a lot right now. I mean, the last uh -huh. few years I've been traveling and doing just little bit parts here and there as far as film. So a workshop, like mm -hmm. uh, and then create a demo reel. And yeah. when you create a demo reel, you how can, do you create a demo you reel? You can record it with a microphone with GarageBand on a Mac computer if you had oh, to. Crap. Like, they just yeah. want to hear how you sound. Now, when you, when you do, they answer. just want to hear how you sound. Yeah. Give me an example of a demo reel. Well, how would you create a demo reel? Do you get music? So you get it's the same way you like record, this. Recording, recording my voice. Yeah. You just, um, the same way you put together an actor demo reel. You, you do different clips of different kinds of commercials. No, what are you like picking up? You're actually like saying, you're saying a paragraph from, from, from... You can, you can actually look up copy. Bible, you can actually look up copy on the internet and look for Google like voiceover copy and you can find commercials. Oh, wow. You could listen to commercials that are already done because it's for demo purposes and copy whatever you hear on TV. I mean... But there's, but there's no music. There's no... You, you no. can... No. Sometimes there is. Mine sounds yeah. like it's commercials. I have two voiceover reels. Um, that I recorded with Rob. I was fortunate to have that in my back pocket. You know, my best friend's husband has a recording studio. The two times I made trips to Vegas, I recorded demos. He edited them for me. But you could edit on GarageBand and keep it very simple. But you got to make sure the acoustics are right. Well, he has a studio, but I, you can get something called a blue snowball and record. That's what my microphone is called, the blue snowball. It's a little round ball. That's interesting. So yeah, you complain about that being cyber. Well, then I, you know, and I'm think I'm thinking here in a demo reel saying, what, well, how, how, you know, where do I get the music from? What do I do this? No. Should I, or do they just want to hear my voice? They just want to. Fancy any does time it have to I be send an, any time I send an audition, it was just my voice. So why couldn't you do that? Okay. I said the guy who did Immortal Joe, Immortal Joe, and, and Mad Max could do voiceover work. He's the character, cartoon yeah. character, his mm -hmm. voices. There's a guy on, on YouTube called uh, Mr. Moon. He does a bunch of videos on um, Day Z and. and mm -hmm. uh, it's all how you do it. Yeah, he's yeah, just it's his natural voice, but yeah. he kind of puts a character to it, and he does a voice, and it's just like it's it's all voice. how you do it. Yeah, it's and how you do it. If it, you probably on that documentary you saw. Yeah. I use my body when I'm recording. You acting. Perform. Well, I so, I don't know. I, I mean, it's performing, but it's not the same as acting to me. No, it's a, it's a, it's a um, different. It's a different. I, like background. for example, I can't have my shoes on. When I recorded, um, I discovered that when I recorded the Guitar Center, I was actually in a studio. I had to take my shoes off. I had to uh, plant my feet. I had to do like this. I had to move my body around. If I wanted certain sounds to happen or certain inflection, I moved my body for that. 
Because Debbie on 101, 105, was it 101? Mm-hmm. You got a sexy voice. Sexy English voice. Yeah. You get you got that sexy voice thing going. Yeah. <laughs> I, wish, I wish it booked me more roles, but it doesn't. Shit. Um, That's really, pretty cool. Man. Yeah. It's funny, there's a certain part, you know, certain, it's, that's a, that's a more, that's weirder to me. That's weird. Just the whole vibration of... How your voice, yeah. yeah vibrates okay. the little mm-hmm. hairs in your ear. Mm-hmm. I was like, I like that sound. You know, is it something, is something about that? Mm-hmm. Like, when I hear Mr. Moon on YouTube, or when I hear Mad Max guy, the, 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 the bad main mm-hmm. bad guy, he's like, ah, oh. it just, it sounds yeah. cool, you know? And then your voice, did that, that's a good voice, man. It's just, yeah, I wish I could. It resonates. More. I need more. <laughs> Hello, um, I need more. Um, American Crime. Yeah. That's your... That's my latest thing that I've done. What's, I've what's American Crime? What's that? That's a show on ABC. They just finished the first season. Um, oh, I, was in the oh third, I think I said, yeah. I, I was in the watch third TV. episode, and I had a scene with they Felicity Huffman. They filmed it here. Yeah. Are they locally? What's it going no, on? No, it brought LA people and a lot of Austin actors are, were walk on roles. Yeah. Why are they filming here in Austin? I don't know, because they did. American Crime? What American does that mean? Crime. What's the, what's the, the premise? The what? premise is that um, it, it starts out with Timothy Hutton and Felicity Huffman have a son and he's killed at the very beginning of the series. And it's 11 episodes and it goes into. Um, who did it and it solves that crime. It's kind of set up like I think American Horror Story or True Detective. If they're coming back for a second season, they'll be different characters. They wrapped up that story. And I had a walk on role. I was in the third episode with her. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. Is it kinda of, is it kinda of like True Detective? Like, yeah, that's what I just said. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, sorry, yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. like now here's a director. Now, what? Now, now here's a director. Who's the director on this American crime? Uh um oh shoot, Twelve Years a Slave. Holy what is his name? Shit. Um, he's not who directed my episode. Oh, they have different directors? Yeah, he had different directors. Oh, what is his name? Wait, wait, he so you're saying so American Slave. Crime is copying the True Detective? Not copying. He'd been developing this for a while. What is his name? John Ridley. Yeah. John, John Ridley directed 12 Years a Slave. He created oh, the show. Man. My friend um, was in the last episode. He directed her episode. Man, um, dude. I can't believe I'm like, I'm here. I'm stuck in this room with cats and... Yeah. And, yeah. and I hear this, all these things are happening outside my house. Well, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> it was really cool. Um, I remember mm-hmm. Izzy, Izzy auditioned for that too. Really? Yeah. yeah. I auditioned for it. A lot of I people, yeah. I, you know, but I wasn't the right But that's okay because I booked it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I had, and I had a scene with Felicity Huffman, so. And here's which a, clearly. So, it's so still not my it, big break. Tell us, tell us about that. Tell us about that. How, how was that like? Oh, that was really because so I am a so huge, bigger than bigger yeah than Bernie. bigger than Bernie in some ways because I actually had a scene with an actor that I loved. Uh, Felicity Huffman did a film called Trans America. She's married to William H Macy. Um, I mean, she what did. A, she was Desperate Housewives, oh which she's most known God. for. But this is an Oscar-nominated, Emmy-winning actress that I love. Love before Very American Crime, now, yeah. and so I find out that I booked this role, and I was like, I don't think I slept the whole night before. I mean, it was so. Well, and so I, where did this come from? You're, you're like, you're, you, boom! This yeah, like, it happened. It happened, and nothing's happened since. So. What was um, the audition like? The audition was, um, oh, so I came in, it was for the role of a hairdresser, which I can do. Um, <laughs> and uh, and the director was excited. She was like, so you're a hairdresser? And I was like, yeah. I had my own apron on. I said, yeah, I just did hair and makeup. I did, I, for Food Network, I did Jeff Morrow, uh, the Sandwich King. I did his makeup. Wait, anyway, that audition? day, I had audition. I'm like, I need to carry Jeff Morrow in my back pocket. Um, and so she was, they were so excited because she's like, I can't believe it's better than being a waiter. And I'm like, yeah. What was this? <laughs> the director, Gloria Muzio, or Muzo, I can't, yeah, she she's was, talking she, like she, she had big curly hair. She was awesome. They loved that I was a real hairdresser. So I found out, so the show was to film the next week. I found out the day before shooting that I had booked it. So I'm like calling clients. I, I'm, 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 I, can't, I can't do your hair. I can't do your hair. I have to move you. Which they were great about it. And so I was on set at 6 in the morning. And I get into the makeup trailer and there she is. And I was like. <gasps> oh my god. And I take my phone. Cliff. Felicity Hoffman. <laughs> I put my phone. I'm like trying to be cool. What's your side of the this happened in August, and they just showed it in March. My episode. You were booking Lance and shit during that time too. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, with the Al Pacino and stuff. 
No, that was way before that he did oh that. So, God. yeah, so August. And so, um, and then uh, she came over Last and year. introduced yeah. herself to me, which was also very like, so she's like, hi, I'm, uh, you know, we're going to be doing the scene. I'm Felicity Huffman. And I was like, hi, it's nice to meet you. And in my head, I'm going, oh, <laughs> I know who you are. Yes. And she's yeah. like, do you want to, who are you? Who are you? Do you want to run our lines? I like to do it a few times. Of course, yeah, we should do that. Oh my God. Felicity Huffman, she introduced herself to me. She's testing you. She was phenomenal. Let me tell she you what. She was probing um, you, like, let's see who this person is. If she sees this by any chance, I would love Highly to work unlikely. with her again. I know. But I would love to work with her again. She was very gracious. Well, the whole crew treated, wow. um, they treated me like I was an actor and I was a part of the cast. I was not treated like a walk-on role. And that was really phenomenal. No, they so, No, they treated me like I was a cast member that day, and that was my sure, experience. That's the way you should, yeah, yeah. That's and it should always be. It was amazing, and she and we improvised half the scene that we did is improvised. Nice, nice. Um, the but the first take, she doesn't like her hair in the take, and so the first time she's like, "It's too fluffy. I don't like it." I was like. Because that's, that was that's like my the, job. Well, but I mean, that was like the first take. I was like, oh shit, this is like for real. This isn't. I mean, I know I say I'm professional or whatever, but this is not anything I have ever done. This was not Bernie. I mean, I was just talking to Richard Linklater in the camera. I was with Felicity Huffman, and she was on the spot. Like, I don't like this fun. hairdo, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so we did it. We did it several times, and it was really awesome. Um, what did you say when she said she didn't like it? I told her it's in the scene. It's not too fluffy. It's fine. It's you can see it on my website. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and so you know, but the look, like the when you watch the scene, she it just shows her head at first. The way she cut her eyes at me, I thought it's gonna crap my pants that first take. I was like, oh my god, this is the big dogs. This is for real. This is not because I've never had a scene with a famous actor before ever. You know. So that was very exciting. After the shoot, we took a picture. She hugged me. She talked to my mom on the phone. I mean, we chatted all the way back to base camp, you know, because they drive you around or whatever. And she was yeah. just phenomenal. She was, I can't speak highly enough of that crew and that director and her. I just can't. I mean, I could carry on for days. It was an awesome experience. It was an amazing experience. And that's the last thing I've done. I, I've had two auditions for The Leftovers. They liked me. They called me for two different roles. I had an audition for some bank commercial, and that's where I'm at right now. Then that's a wrap! <laughs> that's good. And I'm doing that's hair. Good. I'm going to do hair this week. Wow. So. That's impressive. That's, that's, Isn't that cool? That's so cool to me, too. That's cool. Yeah. And the thing is, we're one of your favorite. Favorite actors it was one of my favorite actors, and, uh, I mean, and it was. What are the chances? Yeah. It, it doesn't happen. So I, of course, I would love for more things to happen. But the fact did that she, I got you, that. Do you think she? Do you think she knew that you did? I, I, you know, I was gonna tell her, but I was trying to very hard to be professional. That's right. So I didn't flip out on her. It was all I could. I mean, and poor Cliff was well, six in the morning. He's getting text messages every five minutes. She's just. <laughs> <laughs> We're on set. Yeah, yeah, you know, just um, wow. I, I gotta to, cook. Yeah, <laughs> I had to really contain myself, so if they cut out, so. Oh. To where we would close. Yeah. Yay, recording. Yeah, it's American crime. Oh. So. <laughs> grandpa oh, dropped his. Phone. I know his grandpa. Like. Yeah. It's me. Here's me. Here we go. Let me see. Oh, it's recording. Nice. What the hell is right ahead of mine now. Louise is like blind. Why? Uh, What's wrong with you? Well, look, mine huh? aren't too bad though. Mine are. So I can't harsh. see any of them. It makes it worse. I know, right? Louise is blind. I can see. I can see up to here. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I can't. No, I, I can't see. Like, watch. Shit. <laughs> They're gonna watch you looking at shit on the. Right there, boom. <laughs> that's it. Blurry. So when I need to wear a glass, I can see closer. Well, yeah. That's why I can be able to see no, that. Watch, watch. Blurry, blurry. Stop it. <laughs> wait, wait. Blurry, blurry, blurry. Focus. Turn it oh, on. you're nearsighted. Huh? I'm, I'm farsighted. I'm nearsighted. So, and that's that's why you can't see what my glasses are. And I have astigmatism. It means one eye is one and one is the other, and eventually I'll have to. Oh. Oh, she's jacked up. And I have she's, astigmatism. Oh, she's broken. <laughs> I have both. Mm -hmm. I'll have to have bifocals eventually. 
Yeah. It mostly is for driving, but it's getting where I have to look at like my phone. I have some tab on it. I'm like, I know. Well, there's I know that there's well there's surgery for that, man. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's not the big deal. I know it is. Yeah, it is. When I got my glasses, it was good for work. I can still shoot people from a hundred yards away, so I'm right. okay. Yeah, it's all. <laughs> it's all that matters. We're in Texas. Because I got. Matters. Far, I, well, I, I, forgot, I can see far away, but I can't see up close. So it's like, well, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, got, I, got, <laughs> I got it. That's all that matters. In Texas, you're still on my property. Well, and me, I'm at the point where everybody just looks photoshopped. So y'all look lovely to me. That's great. That's awesome. They it's blurry in my case. I, have no depth, I, I have no depth perception, so you all look fabulous. You look like a picture. Oh my god. That's, that's, that's yeah. where we look good. That's so let's look at it. We're, we gotta do this quick because we're this is gonna be an hour and a half video dude. It's your fault. No, it's not you know it's you talking about Bernie Bernie Dad, Bernie Dad, me, 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 me. You can edit it, you can cut it. Anyway. No, we're not cutting nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So but, So your fascination. Really? With the actress in American Crime. Yeah. Oh, American Crime, love yeah. Love her. Yeah. It was wow. really cool. Very privileged to do that. Not There are a lot of actors that haven't gotten that far. Yeah. There are some that have gotten a lot further, but you know, you have to be grateful for what you do yet. I think yeah. you yeah. have to. Yeah. You are, um, congratulations on American Crime. You are doing an actor's workshop now, right? And, I, I coach with um, Laurel Vouvray. Uh, Coaching in the, again. In the, well, she coaches me. Oh. Um, in the moment acting studio. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I keep thinking you're a coach. No. You're a coach? Like, what? No, no. She's actually, she teaches hairdressing yeah. uh, and coloring. I mean, she's a professor. She actually travels and teaches that. Advanced haircut and color. Oh, yes. And color correction. And yes. So you're little minions? You're little minions right minions. Oh, right. man. You're, 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 and you're, mannequin heads. You, you go up, she's. <laughs> Lots of, you go on Facebook. And she's always at some damn airport. Yeah. All the time. Really? I like yeah. this airport. Airport, 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 airport. I check in. I check All in. the time. I see. Yeah, I'm not going to like this one. <laughs> I'm like, why, why, why? Jealousy. She said I'm she's in Hawaii. Always, I take always. company, so I'm not traveling as much right now. It'll probably be another six months or a year before I start picking that up again, which is wow. okay. Because now I want to try to focus. There's some independent projects I want to try to do. Um, and do more of that and focus more and hopefully that will help generate you know more auditions for yeah and, and if anybody wants to hire you as a professional makeup artist on the commercials or the set mm -hmm. how can you yeah drop some lines drop some drop some valfrazy.com you can see all my work there you can valfrazy.com spell it com v-a-l-f-r-a-z-e-e.com -E okay but you have to pay me because <laughs> that's another it's not free damn it no I gotta I gotta I, I gotta got feed my cats I gotta feed my cats you know, these, these, cats? You, no these, I have these, an old uh, lady but same thing you gotta remember <laughs> these, these Las, Las Vegas yeah, girls yeah lady I have, a, I have a cat these Las Vegas girls you always gotta pay them <laughs> that's right <laughs> Rain, Which bitch. is why nothing ever happens because you never pay, so we're good. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's, wow. it's true. I'm so frugal. Yeah. No, you have, dude. I need a haircut, by the way. I need a haircut. Well, that's always why I made this because it was easy to do. Yeah, I yeah, actually have do. a project in mind that I'm trying to find. Don't you dare steal my idea. No, mine's already done. No. <laughs> that I would like to do, and it's like one actor, one camera, and it would be really simple to film. I could do Whoa, about five or of six of them, what? like what? a web series. I normally don't like producing, but it's something that could be done, and it is from an actor's perspective, and I think it, it could be done very easily. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not on camera, though. I don't want people stealing my idea. Don't tell. Don't say it. I think um, I've mentioned it to you. Blah before. blah blah. So that's what I hope to do this summer. I've slowed down traveling. And, yeah. You know, try um, to get more. Well, Val, thank so you. When you thanks for, for that work. Val, when you leave here, we know. Yeah. I'm going to meet my scene partner Addie from my acting class uh, with Laurel Vouvray in the awesome. Moment Acting Studio, and we are going to uh, work our Meisner technique. Ooh, I know Meisner. Yeah. Yeah. I've taken Meisner. That's what we're I doing. I did for a year. I, mm -hmm. I never took Meisner. What? It's good, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? It's good. 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 You like that? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Is this, what, is this what Meisner is about? I like that. Do you think you like that? I like that. You like that. I like that. You like that. I like that. You like that. I like that. You're trying to change on me. This is the Meisner's technique, I think. I'm trying to change on you. Yeah, you're trying to change on me. I'm trying to change on you. Yeah, you're getting in your head. I'm getting in my... Holy fuck! <laughs> it's a good shit! Good job! <laughs>
I'm lost. You guys just we didn't we we just just didn't No, we just did Pfizer right now. Am I kind of rusty? You're kind of rusty. I'm kind of rusty. Kind of rusty. I'm kind of rusty. Yeah, you're okay with that then. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Holy shit is awesome! Holy <laughs> fuck is yet. awesome! This is fucking awesome! That's what Miser is. Yeah. You, you basically, reading behavior. Yes, you're reading behavior and yeah, trying to read the... It's also facial... It's, it's all behavior yeah. and responding to it in that moment so that when you're in a scene, I, I, you respond... Do it's even better when you're drinking. And that too, right? Holy shit. That's and that's what it's about. That's why I keep telling you you need to take it. You take Miser, dude. You to the next level. Well, I'm, I'm, Look I'm, at me, I'm fucking rusty as fuck and I, I could... See what she was doing. Well, I'm taking I'm taking a, a one day workshop with uh, Stephen Bridgewater. That's a good. That's good too. But this yeah. is an ongoing. This is something that you build upon, and yeah. you learn another yeah. way to. Uh, so the, my, I think I think miser is good for to to when you're acting with somebody to bounce off of. Yeah. That's what. That's why I think that's what with you when I when I act with you, I, I know I kind of feel what you're what you're what you're doing, mm -hmm. and I can bounce off of that. Mm -hmm. And when I give you something, you can you you know you see where I'm coming from. You bounce back. The acting, the acting, well, the lines, like we did in Mighty Man. Exactly, it's Mighty Man was the improv. Behavior. Yeah, it's all, it's all reading behavior. It's all reading behavior. It's like reading is like you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's all back and forth, back and forth. And it's rep repetition is you're able to to like when, when you the, the good example is that you you go to get a coffee and the guy goes thanks for the coffee and he goes yeah yeah have a good day. He's not really saying have a good day. He's like, yeah, yeah, fuck off. I fucking hate you. I hate my life. I fucking want to kill myself. I, my girlfriend left me. That's really all of it. All of it. And yeah, whatever. Everything he said right there is like, I fucking hate my life. I fucking my girlfriend mm -hmm. left me. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have a nice day. That's what he's really saying. Yep. And it's so it's it's, it's almost a great technique. It's awesome because it's it's it not gets you out of your head. It, exactly. It gets you. You you're thinking on what the other person's thinking, and you're basically mind reading almost okay. and, you're, and you're not you're yeah. just responding to behavior and you're reacting based off of behavior as opposed to planning don't plan it's what all it's all bouncing back playing um, playing tennis back yeah. and forth that's right. and so every so that. each yeah. take will be different sometimes and that's, right? see, and that's improv the, the, there's no there's all bullshit of having to rehearse shit yeah you can rehearse the only reason why I rehearse because I want to see where the fuck they're at as far as like, can I? Oh, this is fucking grass. I'm I'm bouncing a basketball on grass. It ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. then, but yeah, then, oh, I'm bouncing on concrete. Woohoo! I can bounce all I want with this motherfucker. Yeah. But, but it, they're yeah. fucking grass, and it's like it's mud, and the, the, it's not gonna go anywhere. Then you know, that's, not, that's the only reason for rehearsal is to probe where they're at. Where well, and for my partner now, I, th yeah. this is her process, so I've got to respect her process. Yeah, this is gonna be good. Ball ring. Uh, I love her. She's awesome. Yay! Yay. She is. Yay. Thank you. Pretty cool. Thanks man. for asking me. I appreciate no, it. No, no. Burp. Burp. <laughs> Burp. Thank Bye. you. Thanks for watching. You, uh, you four people that are out there that are watching this. There Loser. might also be five Thank now. you for watching Losers. Thought, thank you for watching Losers. Yeah. Losers. You four people that are out there watching yeah. this. My mom's going to be five. I hope so. Hi. Bye. Bye. We're all winners. Bye. America. 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 Peace out. Peace. <laughs>